Hello, Internet. I'm Jackie Fox, and this is Lucio. Lucio is maybe one of the most interesting team units for a rainbow team because he is the only unit in the game that has an all elemental buff there is at least one other unit maybe two i think reagan maybe into the future has fire and ice and then you've got light and lightning on sakura but there's definitely nobody who has a rainbow buff like this just saying now he's a very versatile unit he's a bit of a swiss army knife he can be your tank if you need him to be that but he's much more uh suited to being a brawler that being said um a lot of times when i used him i did find that paladin added a lot to his kit he does have a good kit he does have a good upgrade coming that will be free so we got a free unit We've got one that... Wait, hold up, hold up, hold the f... Nobody told me about this. Wait, what? Hold on. Hold the phone. When do we get that part? That was apparently a part of his master ability one. What is this? Okay, I hope we get that for sure. Shit. That's cool. Okay, um... I'm a sucker for extra JP. Good grief. AP consumption, AOE resistance, good combination. Damn. That's good. That's good in general. Yeah. Yeah, he's got some good upgrades in the 140. And again, that, that kind of that rainbow in addition to his flexibility. Like he was he was meant to be able to work on like I guess, uh, Warrior of the Crystal theme teams, rainbow teams, but like, I, I, maybe they underestimated what they had done with elemental VCs and with the master ability upgrades. But, you know, as much as Lucio is built for rainbow teams, he was introduced after that era, unfortunately. So, with that being said, We've talked about many of the the greats of the newer units. But there is at least one more classic to consider for similar reasons to Lucio. And that's going to be Oberon. So I would make the argument that Queen Mashari is a better and more necessary, well, yeah, no, no, this is a very easy argument, actually. Um, that Queen Mashari is a much better unit on an Earth team than she is on a Rainbow team. Not only her LB, but one of her additional skills breaks Earth. Now, to be fair, um, to be fair and balanced, Oberon 2 has an Earth resistance break. And yes, it does stack with his LB, which is interesting for him on a rainbow team. But 20% all elemental resistance down, while it's not as big as other elemental resistance breaks, especially not ones that you might find on a limit break, the fact that it helps your entire team makes it markedly better on a rainbow team than it does within its own element. And it, it doesn't hurt me at all <laughs> to not run this subject. I, I don't feel bad about that. Sorry about that long open, but I thought it was important to get those units out of the way when chronologically they actually come last in the better way that I should organize this video. In fact, how I organize this video, who I pick and how I say it all concisely, including what I say, who I leave in and out, is not something that was consistent between the many takes that I did this. 
but ultimately I think these are the best takes of those and I tried not to cobble things together too much to really bring in a lot of inconsistency so this is basically my best two runs and well I guess I'll check back in with you at the end so see you there Hello Internet, I'm Jackie Fox, and I previously put out a video looking at rainbow teams from the perspective of job-based PCs, but that's not necessarily the only way to look at this. Maybe this is going to sound a little crazy, but sometimes the biggest numbers aren't always the best thing. <laughs> You could make the case for any of the units, pretty much any of the units that I'm talking about today, being better off in their home element due to a lot of systemic advantages that just make units stronger within their own element, whether that be the prevalence of elemental vision cards and the ease of building synergies between units within an element in addition to their master abilities buffing each other up, um, adding... Um, like stacking onto each other, increasing in effect the more of a singular element that you use, these things add a natural advantage to units that sometimes can be pretty big in their favor on a large, <clears throat> well, mainly we're talking, like, like on a PVP situation, it stacks up to three and then you can get up to six within pve so it's it's sometimes it could be an even harder sell in pve i think but the theory behind rainbow teams what seems to work is to take high value high power um high importance within whatever their niche is units and to use them kind of to their maximal strategic advantages, whether it be playing certain elements together to counterplay something, whether you're mixing and matching and taking the best of, you know, who's the best tank in the game, the best DPS and the best support, throw them on a team together. <laughs> like it used to be one of the most popular rainbow teams that I have ever seen in my experience of this game historically was Yuna. She was the first of the units that came out for this team. Then King Mont, because, you know, you've got just, just like meta resettingly good healer. And then you get a meta resettingly good tank. And then you get a meta resettingly good DPS in Black Witch Helena. These are your first 200 cost units and your big investment unit off of the last collaboration. And that team got so overpulled, overhyped. Uh, well, not. It's hard to overhype Black Witch Helena, especially because she did genuinely dominate the game for quite a while. That won't just hype. She was a problem. Like, genuinely, the player base began to see her as a problem that needed to be solved. With that in mind, it would behoove you, it would be best for you to think about job synergies it would be best to view this through that lens and try to use those even if it's a little bit mixed something like what i was doing with um katana and red mage which could very easily be a, a very mixed team it adds more variety more variety gives more strategy and also it's harder to think about counterplay for because Compared to the way that we're used to thinking about the game, it's kind of random. In that you have so much more versatility than we're used to players really having with their builds. The problem is making up for all of the systemic advantages that are putting your rainbow teams behind. Really, the rainbow teams need to rise up and demand rights, like, you know, rainbow effects more often so that they're not the subject of <laughs> so much systemic discrimination <laughs> oh my god we got there ladies and gentlemen we we got there and in only five minutes so since we got there let's genuinely start talking about units oh boy 
So I made the decision to remove the limited units from this and that has had some a few unfortunate effects that I do want to remedy by saying that Bradley is fucking ridiculous. He penetrates pretty much everything which is going to make him an amazing and maybe future proof DPS until there's a new gimmick that can dissuade him from slaughtering you. But until then, he counters pretty much everything better than anyone else who counters it does, with the exception of Earth Resistance, which inherently isn't a problem for a Rainbow Team. I know it's a problem for him, but if that's all they're really working towards, if that's what they've specced into just to deal with your Bradley, then you've already kind of won. Maybe you've won back some of that disadvantage in that the thing that they were hoping was going to save their ass against him doesn't mean a damn thing to two of your units. The other unit that I would say that works well from this collaboration on Rainbow Teams, I mean, obviously it's Edward, but we're factoring out job VCs. Because I think when you take strike teams out of the equation, Edward gets a lot less interesting, and Alphonse really steps up to shine. In fact, I think, like, really, um, the, the most optimal plays are start with Alphonse and then go to Edward, ultimately. I think Edward is a better unit for supporting his brother than he is a better unit than his brother. Even though, they're both good. They're both good for very different reasons. But I think that for Alphonse specifically, he's one of those units that does what he does so well. He just has so many layers of defense to peel back like an armored onion that some of his stats could be lacking some of the vcs on him could be on on the team with him could be suboptimal for him and he could still be pretty darn hard to kill with a good strategy going on around him although one of the big reasons that i wouldn't i don't want to emphasize him too much is that he may be the first of the new modern tanks and it's easy to look at the first of any new era of unit and say, wow, that's really amazing. But remember, remember, a lot of these things are make or break in a lot of ways on what happens later. Like something that I say often about Yuffie is that what makes her good is that other units don't also have that ability even though unfortunately the meta is seemingly countering that ability uh, uh starting to hard counter that ability already pretty consistently just a bunch of accuracy units lately like Rissel, Hio, and Stern but also most of the collaboration units in one way or another um, well, the brothers both have guaranteed hit for their accuracy, so maybe not them specifically, but Bradley and Roy are both incredibly accurate. So, look, the, the thing that really works for her is that she is a curveball, that she has her own niche that she excels at, and it screws with the way that people play defense against that kind of archetype if that were to become more common in the future if it were to become more general practice to counter a unit like her then she might not be as interesting she might not be as viable um at least for this because i think that that she can potentially be like a good one-off unit um to just kind of screw with people and a unit that people aren't expecting to have to counter. Now you might have to aim a little bit for the bottom of the barrel to find evasion teams that really have a lot of trouble with her, but it, you can find some that have been basically coasting on their guaranteed hit because that's been the most effective way to make it through that ver portion of the metagame and is still a strategy favored by many units. So it, she's, she's not unviable in that respect. 
and one elf evasion units can be effective. If nothing else on your team works, that still can. And, you know, that's impactful. Um, that saves some games sometimes. But I'm not really here to talk about those limited units. I did want to mention them um, since maybe you got Yuffie recently and the two units I just mentioned before that are both still pullable. Although, again, Alphonse is not like... How do I say this? How do I say this that's respectable to my big tanky boy? Alphonse is a great tank. He is worthy of inclusion in this video, but it's really hard to talk about pulling him or thinking about pulling him, including him in this video, really talking about him extensively and recommending him or vouching for him when I know that an even better rainbow tank is coming in the way of Rafu, who is significantly less limited than Alphonse, significantly less FOMO factor. If you're looking for a plug and play tank that can work with any team, save for Rafu, don't, don't get Alphonse. But if you do have Alphonse, he is that unit. And if you want Alphonse for other reasons, like strike teams, like still perfectly valid, get him. But you know, if you're looking for that off tank, for your other team eh, i wouldn't i wouldn't waste the viz i guess is what i'm saying it's it's not the worst you could do but i would save that for rafu if that's really the kind of thing you're needing next unit i would say is perrine because she's so independent she is a strong independent mother and she like she's she's snow without courage and the initial hate but way more damage <laughs> well yeah, no no she does considerably more damage she is a scary unit to come up against because she does a lot of damage very quickly once she gets in range and unless you have already chipped her down quite a bit or you can take her down incredibly fast, which which implies getting pretty damn close to the damage limit with the way her HP will be. Especially with the number of reincarnations. She can be really hard to take out in one turn, and she can two-turn kill like everybody else. So, you know, especially if you can get a bit of a tempo advantage before she gets into range, she can just shut a game down. So it's hard not to argue for her on a wide variety of teams. Lya Rundle is probably the strongest gunner in the game. <clears throat> Period, point blank. Um, her heavy ballistics giving her only two movement is such a blessing for her. If you're a newer player, you might not really get why that is, but it keeps her as a gunner from getting up and having problems with getting way too out in front and it keeps her relatively safer especially if you have some sort of a tank that can charge in um rapidly and put increasing distance between themselves and her so with that in mind if you need kind of just a ranged dps for your team if that is that form of dps that you want if you have a rush in tank strategy um like i was describing and you know Snow would do a good job of that. Alphonse would do a good job of that. I'm sure Rafu would do a good job of that. Fine. Um, then she's probably one of the strongest ranged units. If not, maybe the strongest ranged unit you could put on that team. The next unit I want to point out is Dark Fina. And it's really because she's such a standout, both like non-elemental damage dealer, which means that at least her non-elemental damage doesn't suffer as much from not being on an elemental team. So that's a kind of an odd advantage for her as a damage dealer. But also she is an incredible single target dam or yeah, single target damage dealer, which is gonna be especially effective into future metas. So really like her. Um I will say that she's gonna get way more play on dark teams. And, you know, kind of similarly to how I feel about 
uh, Winged Stern, I, I feel like most of the players who are probably going to be building her are going to be building her specifically for a, for a dark team. Um, much like I think that, that Winged Stern is going to be played <sighs> probably most often on light teams, but, you know, he, he looks cool enough. <laughs> Like, if I was just starting this game, I'd be like, fuck yeah, but am I playing light? I don't know. I want this guy. Um, I could see me making that kind of pull for him. So, maybe we'll see more Rainbow Stern than I think, and maybe we'll see more Rainbow Dark Fina, but I think that she's really exemplary of a thing that's going to be important for teams to potentially have, and she just excels in doing it. Eliza is my favorite bow unit. I actually like her more than Aliyah in a lot of ways, but um, because she is a bow unit and because I recently realized how much Gumi hates bow units, yeah, uh, I'm. That's that's the statement. Clip that. Um, I I find it harder and harder to to. Uh, advise her especially into rainbow i think this would be like the one format where i would well i mean she's probably best in ice really but um i definitely wouldn't recommend her for for job vc teams given that there's only two bow vcs and they're both magic um just trash but she's one of my favorite units, so I do want to recommend her because she can, at the very least, if you're using a two missile strategy, like maybe you're running her with Setia, who I think would be a, a potentially a really strong combination with her. Um, especially because their breaks line up really well. But, you know, her LB having ice resistance down is a little unfortunate, but having movement down really just puts a unit maybe their tank specifically because it's probably going to the person with hate um in in a place where they are just not closing that gap very quickly now arguably that's not the unit you want so maybe they're even better against teams that don't have a tank if you can slow down a more frail dps to where they can just ping it one more time and take it out of the fight that's perfect so i can i can see her getting used with other ranged units she also has high critical rate and um, a move that has a, an eight panel a oh, sorry nine panel AOE CT down move. So with Thornlet that can get uh, CT down and agility down. I think that's another good way of stopping the advancing horde from making it to your ranged units. So. I think that she does have some potential on a ranged team um, of the rainbow variety. Sodly, sodly, sodly. I've, oh man, I've talked about this guy multiple times um, in beginners videos, but he's got re-raise and hate up on one move, which just makes anyone work as a tank that you can get him to cast it on, essentially. I mean will not make them a tank um but you know the the bare ass fundamentals of what you need to be a tank is hate and some way to survive and that is the bare minimum on both <laughs> it is really good to apply to your tank it makes your tank better and that uh, if you have a tank that's who he's going to apply it to but as a devout he also has a single target heal with attack and magic up. Um, he's not going to use that super often though, unless you can get him to kind of stick in at the rear of your formation. But if he ever gets towards the front, he can really screw your opponent's game up in a lot of... He, this this man is the physical embodiment of a Marlboro, okay? <laughs> he has the worst breath. Um, or sermons. Well, the sermons are a vehicle for his breath. He's very breathy when he gives a sermon. He has foul, foul breath. It causes confusion. Somehow it even charms people. I don't know. It also makes them very slow. Um, maybe he's just... Maybe he's... 
I'm I'm not going to question the uh, the drugs or methods that he may be uh, achieving these status effects through, but um, needless to say, he can really screw up your oppo your opponent's plans. Like, and I think that running him on a rainbow team where he might be a more hidden unit that they haven't tried to prepare for, that he could just screw a lot of games up. Like, this is not a unit that you want to run into unprepped for for sure because he can ruin all the best laid plans he has such good villain energy in his kit that he's great on a lot of teams um sweetheart ildira i have gained so much more respect for it lately and a lot of it's for lb which is kind of unfortunate but big diamond ct down effect very impactful from what i've seen it also gives her CT up, not like a full quicken or anything, but it's enough that she's probably, all other things being equal, probably going to get a turn on whoever got hit by that. And she has really good moves, uh, Blinding Trinity, the one that comes to mind, for following that up and chaining with herself in that one instance. Now that one instance might be enough to wipe a team. It's a really interesting way to go about it, and I think it's quite powerful. If you have an entire team that has a rush strategy, maybe a CT manipulation team, maybe you're running it with Bradley, maybe you're running it with ninjas, you know, there's a variety of ways that this could work, but that move is super impactful for her. Unfortunately, after that, she's really just a saboteur, so she's a lot more like a your Renell at that point. That that LB really puts her aside. But it is so impactful in the, like, quick team wins kind of plays in single battle formats that I think that she is still absolutely a unit of note, even if she's one of the few units that I've talked about so far that I would absolutely put, like, a format asterisk on. All right, so next up we've got Resnick. Resnick is a lot like Sylvie. Sylvie has far more defensive buffs in combination with her heals. She has full life, she has more single target moves um, for healing, and uh, she has cast times. Whereas Resnick is more often instant or uh, maybe slightly faster she has more offensive buffs on her heels um more aoe's and isn't really suitable for dealing damage to the enemy whereas sylvie can wipe some people if she is so inclined um so they are both really good resonic works better with units that are maybe a bit newer and have a lot of survivability naturally she works really well with alphonse but that's not very rainbow of us now is it um but other units like that are she's going to be really good with like she's probably going to be particularly good with a unit like rafu as well just tanks that can keep themselves alive through a bunch of extra gimmicks and stay alive until Resnick can give them a turn to restore their HP and give them a handy buff. Um, those units are going to do a lot better and units that don't necessarily have that survivability, units that can be a bit more fragile are going to maybe get a little bit more out of Sylvie and maybe getting that full life. Or you're running Sylvie to destroy people, but also be able to randomly heal with priority and a shield, which is neat. Um, it is a kind of a different philosophy for running her, and you know, they're both good, come on. But I think that leaning more into her supportive capabilities is probably better for her. At least in the rainbow context. And then we've got Velus. Velus unfortunately didn't, um, while he is also an arithmetician with Resnick, he didn't get the wide ranging instant heal that arithmeticians have, and I think he would have been a lot better if he had gotten it. That caused me to kind of discount his value early on, and I'm still, I mean, I still think he should have got it. Shit. Man, I'm not giving this up. Um still think he should have got that like level whatever cura 
but he didn't, and I have to accept that. He does have an instant uh, single target ability, but I, th I think you're probably running him Scholar. Uh, yeah, probably. Um, He is a little bit more specific, I would say, than the other supports, and I'm glad we're kind of getting a lot of them out of the way right here at once, because he's going to be particularly more suited for teams that burn through AP quickly, um, teams that can keep themselves relatively alive. <laughs> he has no way of bringing them back from the dead, uh, to be sure but also he has the ability to give them haste so units that want haste units that don't naturally have haste um, but also that haste can maybe help keep them safe in combination with his heals but you know you want probably more physical units or units that get stronger with that haste because he does apply it very effectively um, compared to units that would haste through guard haste or haste jaw or other things like that. His just land faster and more effectively on the whole team in my experience. Which means it's a lot more likely that he gets your whole team hasted before he has to switch into healer mode. Setia is probably one of the strongest independent archers if you could only run one archer on your rainbow team it would probably be setia if you had to run two i would say setia and eliza and i feel that's because she has a lot of moves that really strip people bare and a lot of big aoe skills that can really change the tide of battle in a way that you know eliza being an excellent unit she just doesn't have and that huge ability to swing the tempo of a fight from range um which i'm not going to say is unmatched or anything but it it is quite uh special for her and she is the most powerful iteration of it there are other units that can do it and maybe do different things with it like you know mr curie can hit an aoe at a quite a range and inflict frostbite um, but I think she has the best interactions across the board with that type of strategy. Um, it also benefits her that she has 100 cost power over Curie's MR Ness. Joom and, you know, while we're at it, King Mont are both well modernized, kind of second gen tanks. Um, if you are looking for a rainbow tank to hold you off in Tilrafu or you for whatever reason aren't planning to get her but you need yourself a rainbow tank these are the way that i would go um mont is gonna have more ability to you know throw in some status with disable or break people's slash resistance Whereas Joom is going to be a little bit safer against magic, uh, especially since you aren't trying to run much, if any, faith on her, which is more of an option for King Mont. But that also means, and again, like, don't discount Disable's ability to just shut mages off. Like, that too can work. Um, in the evasion matchup, I think joom works out a little bit better because she has a very wide ranging not huge damage but guaranteed hit move which while it isn't good at taking out evasion units like from the start once they have gotten down to courage once they've gotten down to re-raise as a part of a well-balanced anti-evasion team she makes a good finisher for that type of strategy with that move because it is probably a bit closer to chip damage really they can both kind of go a bit of a brawler lurry direction but i think that maybe he does that a little bit better in some ways and she becomes more of a stubborn stalwart defender but they both do have similar tanking properties in a lot of ways so moving on a bit let's talk 
about maces, mace units. And there are, um, the reason that I'm bringing up mace specifically in this video, and I will also bring up the black mage group, is that they have a lot of kind of off VCs and they also have some of the most VCs. So these are weapon types that I think have been intentionally kind of game designed to be supportive uh, slot into your team type units and jobs. So of the units I haven't addressed here that would work well for Rainbow, I mean, we've got Rafu because this is a more updated list than me looking at the current global list. But you also have Ildira, who is going to be more stubbornly healer support, more defensive unit. And then you have uh, Halloween Lilila, who is actually a more aggressive unit, while also simultaneously having full life in her kit, having a bit more range, a bit more um, movement, which can also increase her range, generally being a better, potentially a better white mage than than Ildira, um, although her AI is not as tuned to healing, and especially because of that long offensive range that she also has, and that, that movement range as well. Now, again, you can counter some of that and put her into more of a healing mode, but she can be a really good support, and she is one of the supports that you're going to find with full life, and I always find that that's a distinction worth making, because you know, if, if having a unit is good to begin with, then having them come back at full life is pretty damn good. Like it's, it's really hard to beat the satisfaction that you feel upon that in, until they get, like, chained on before they can move. Then that really breaks all the happiness now, Dalna. All right, looking at the staff group. Coming in the future and not a unit that I've talked about on this. I haven't actually talked about Rafu that much either, but Lena and I don't know the most about Lena. I do know one of her standout qualities that like the big headline for Lena. Not that this is the only thing that she does because I remember being generally impressed but thinking that the big game changer, the way that they were, other than making her just generally good, the way that they were really pushing her was double re-raise. So remember me talking about Stars of Swiftness with Bellis, it being applied both to the caster and the person who was being casted on. Same way this re-raise works. So she will get re-raised and someone else will get re-raised. It's great. It's great. It's a, it's a natural evolution of that type of strategy, and that makes her incredibly notable. And because of that notability, because of that, like, just obviously best new level of power type thing, I think that makes her an important supergroup. <laughs> For fuck's sake, actually, um, the entirety of the Final Fantasy VI collaboration, which I still haven't had too much time to look into has big super group energy at least at a glance still waiting for more footage and more time to sit down with some of the numbers and for um, <clears throat> world of calc to fix some of the irregularities and i get it new abilities hard to describe them hard i don't know how to put that in there but uh i want to know <laughs> Another unit on here that I didn't mention previously is Lemure, and I mentioned Phoebe earlier as well, both of them being Time Mages, also both of them, well, it, it's really the Time Mage that makes them interesting. First of all, just because having access to Quicken is one of those things that like, I don't care what fucking element you are, that's great, you know? Like, I can, yeah, yeah, I can suck it up on some of the other stuff. I, I can make a suboptimal play if it is to get Quicken onto a team that otherwise wouldn't have it. That's great. That's great. I like it. It really opens up some interesting strategies. It can be busted. It's fun. And also, Phoebe is a non-elemental damage dealer entirely, I think. I don't know, she might be able to like Dragoon pounce on people with uh, light damage, but functionally she's got Comet and Meteor. So like, okay, 
look. Let's be honest. Phoebe can finish somebody off with a meteor. It's it's a thing that I've seen happen way, way more than it should. But it's usually a result of the rest of your game plan going absolutely to shit. Usually she is not in the position to KO someone with a meteor. And if you have put her in that position, you're doing it wrong. But it is worth noting that Time Majors in general or Time Mage derivative classes like Dark Fina has, so Dark Fina, Phoebe, and Lemure, they all have like base meteor and comet so compared to other units they have very strong single target non-elemental moves so for a lot of the same reasons that i was well not, not i mean they aren't the same type of single target damage dealers but they do have some of the same moves and share some qualities that i was bragging on for dark fina um being particularly suited to a rainbow team those things still apply to them I don't think they're going to be massacring people with comets the way that Dark Fina does. And that was really the main reason for pointing her out earlier. But Phoebe, especially for a limited, but also Lemure for being kind of the non-limited version of Phoebe, the UR version of Phoebe, um, they are both quite good. And both units that I would absolutely splash onto a rainbow team. And with that... I believe that we are finally th and thankfully comprehensively done and oh my gracious I have done so many versions of this video just from having to do little fact checks to make sure I was saying the right this is a lot of units and things to remember off the top of my head so if you appreciate all that hard work and the fucking time that i put into all these takes uh then please like subscribe send send money send help send mental help uh don't know what that was i really don't cry for help maybe um <laughs> Ooh, man. I'll see you in the next one.